I'm 27 years old and I'm an occupational hygienist. Most people don't know what I do. Generally they think I'm either telling people to wash their hands in the workplace or I clean toilets. It doesn't involve either of these things. What it does involve is looking at the workplace and identifying whether there's hazards which can cause disease or can harm people's health. I work for Blue Scope Steel in the Health and Safety Department. We manufacture steel. We have such products as Colourbond and Galvanised Steel made here. We have about 1,000 people on site, so it's a very large site. There's a lot of work to do here, so it is quite varied. So specifically what we look at is around chemicals, noise and vibration, and thermal stress. This is radiant heat. This is humidity. Thermal stress is around heat, so it can either be that there's environmental heat and it's impacting on the person, or a person's doing a job which makes a lot of body heat. Probably the most fun thing I find about the job is we get little bits of equipment and we go out and we test and we understand what the environment is. As a steel manufacturing client, there is a lot of noise around, so we do do noise monitoring on site to understand what the noise exposure levels are for people. So there are two different ways that we do noise monitoring. We can either do static monitoring, and that's if we're specifically trying to find out about a crane or a forklift or a static piece of equipment. We also do personal monitoring, and this is when we put a personal noise monitor onto an employee and they wear it for their entire shift. And that's really important to understand what noise they're exposed to. There's a lot of chemicals in the workplace and potentially they can get into the atmosphere, which means that people can breathe them in. And if people breathe in certain chemicals, they can harm the body or cause diseases. So what we do is we have little pumps and we set them up so that they've got a filter on them. The filter on the person will draw in the atmosphere and then at the end of the shift, we take it off the person and we do chemical analysis on the filter. A lot of occupational hygienists will send their filters off to a laboratory for them to get tested. Here at Western Port, we actually have our own chemical lab. So I do my own chemical analysis to determine how much chemicals is in it, which is a lot of fun. And then you do a report afterwards, which tells you how much of the exposure level is. The largest part of the job is probably communication with employees of all levels of the business. Communication can be going and talking to the guys on the line, or it can be going and talking to the, to the managers in the areas and letting them know there's an issue and what they need to do to improve the situation. There's a lot of paperwork that's involved with occupational hygiene. Report writing always takes a lot of time. But initially, I didn't do occupational hygiene. I studied environmental engineering at RMIT, and I actually studied to become a maths teacher. After I finished that, I um, found out about the job here at Blue Scope Steel, and it was involved with chemical safety. When I found out about occupational hygiene, I found out that there's a graduate diploma of occupational hygiene that Deakin University does, and so I enrolled in that, and I studied that for two years. My dad actually works for the oil industry, so I always knew I wanted to work in industry, and I think that's why I enjoy working here so much. It's a lot of fun. As this isn't a very well-known occupation, most people don't know how to get into it, but you do have to have quite a strong math and science background. So obviously studying those subjects at school is the best way to go. After you've finished high school, getting into either a science or an engineering type degree, that's your best way forward, because you actually have to complete that to get into the Graduate Diploma of Occupational Hygiene, and normally that's a must to get employed within any company. Some hygienists work directly for the health and safety department, some work for the engineering department, for the chemical lab, for the medical centre, but there's also jobs within community organisations and in government organisations as well. There is a huge amount of opportunities for this job and with the ever-growing concern of health and safety throughout Australia, the need for hygienists is always increasing. There's lots of opportunities for travel within occupational hygiene throughout the world and also within Australia. Occupational hygiene, because it covers so many things in your personal life as well, you do take it home. Everybody has chemicals at home. I'm always reading the back of packaging. If the product says that it's natural, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. Noise is a concern at home as well. If you're mowing the lawn, a lot of people now are wearing their hearing protection, which is great to see, because obviously noise at home can also damage your hearing. I reckon it's a great job that I do. I really enjoy it. I suppose the best thing is that it's always changing.